okay so now the next session we are going to talk about application security design or code and for that we are again having a two more volunteers from apgi i would like to call upon diren shah diren could you please come on to the stage diren is product development manager and agile devops practitioner he is very passionate about engineering technology people agile aspects he enjoyed educating organization about values principal practice and lot of things i don't think i am able to cover everything and definitely he will talk about himself so i will give him a leave let him talk rather than i am talking and yagnesh could you please also come down to the stage yagnesh and diren they are going to give us a i would say they are talk, going to talk about application security design or code yagnesh is a senior software architect and he stays motivated by working on something new every day so yagnesh i would like to understand what you are doing new today especially in his spare time yagnesh like to spend time in forest of india to capture and study biodiversity good 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 to know about that so all yours anything from my side and are we are we good to slido.com able to put up the values and everything is working fine okay thanks so maybe uh, aditya would you like to wait for okay maybe theek hai okay uh, sorry i'm going to take over i can't wait i would have <laughs> okay hello hello oh, yeah it's working fair enough so till the presentation comes up let's do this first of all thank you all of you to be here and choosing topic security shall i say not getting recorded shall i say over agile <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay uh, but good good to see so many people who are at least curious to know about security or concerned to know more about security right so that uh, what sudanshu said about in my introduction after hearing piyush this morning i think so it was picked up from linkedin and it was as you know what is there on the linkedin so i'll try to say that you know i am a learner into security area from from last 3 years we are trying to learn and try to adopt something so we're going to share something about it and he's the architect with me who has more understanding on technical things around it so let's see how we learn from each other is that okay yeah there's a possibility we might make a mistake do not ponder on us raise your hand and say okay what you are saying is not aligned this is not what it happens so we'll learn from each other and we'll try to keep it interactive is this good okay superb uh, are we still taking time you are good perfect okay if you look at this application security design or code right is this making you a bit curious right i need to know few you people ma'am can you help me with what curious Sorry. what is the curiosity what it makes uh more than curiosity i think it's the need of the r you know uh, i come from a enterprise uh, uh, digital transformation background so i want to really understand you know now we are moving away from just biz devops to biz, biz sec devops so i'm looking uh, from that curious angle how you integrate the biz sec devops in, as part of this journey anyone else would like to share their curiosity or concern yes uh, i'm just curious to read design or code why not both design and code okay. security i think फर्स्ट ऑल वी आर लेट सो पॉसिबिलिटी लंच थोड़ा सा आप लोगों का फाइव दस मिनट इधर उधर जा सकता है इट गोज एंड वी गॉन ऑनली फोकस ऑन वेरी फ्यू थिंग आई एम ट्राइंग टू सेट एन एक्सपेक्टेशन आई एम नॉट गॉन कवर इन नेक्स्ट थर्टी मिनट्स होल आस्पेक्ट और एवरी आस्पेक्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटी राइट बट लेट्स ट्राई टू सी हाउ वी आर गोइंग विल मेक श्योर बाई एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन एट लीस्ट वन पार्ट इज बिन वेरी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वी आर एबल टू डू इट टूगेदर राइट परफेक्ट एंड देन लेट्स मूव अहेड Okay. Hello. Okay. Demo. 
Yes. Uh, so we are going to introduce ourselves a little bit differently. Uh, as you can see, I'm a very famous person. Almost every next data breach that happens in India, my data was found. Okay. And I'm very foodie also. So you see a lot of online orders, Amazon, Big Basket, Domino's, Zomato. So people are, I mean, hackers are following me everywhere actually. You can see that. And Vice versa, if I see Dhiren's data, only five times his data was being breached or found in any hacks. I know he's Jane, so he don't order pizza. <laughs> but I don't know what separately he's doing there. Dhiren, can you please share something? Because I am being breached in 23 times up till now. Okay, good. Uh, so when we were actually trying to design this presentation, right, we thought of having that glamorous slide of talking, you know, we are so good on doing this. But it's a, it's a security thing, well, let's check how our data has been, our own data has been leaked. And when we started looking at the site, we, we use the site regularly actually. We found that his data was around 27, 23, 23 right? And yeah. mine was on 3 first and now it is on 5 latest when I check. So ideally, what I practice, a very simple thing I practice, I have an email address which is not relevant to any identity of my personal data, which is used majorly for ordering the online and everything, right? So that is how I'm trying to take care and that's the also reason I'm very less, uh, uh, my data is very less available on different sites. And that's the introduction. So you guys, after this, uh, we'll give the link to you and try to see where your data has been already exposed, right? And try to de-identify yourself from all this online portal, at least your personal information. So it's gonna help you to get less trapped, right? Yep. By the way, uh, 2 rupees are the price of data ki in the market. So it is sold only for 2 rupees. Yep. So now more formal introduction. So myself, Yagnesh Taylor. I am Senior Software Architect. Working with from TS Avery from almost a decade now. And yeah, I am with TS Avery and uh, from last 5 years. And I am also a volunteer with APGI from last 5 years. Uh, and I am into product development and engineering. Okay, so just let's focus on some of the major data breach that recent past happened in India. We are not going too fast. I mean, I see the data is up to 2021 and how many amount of data getting breached? If you may have heard, uh, recently AIMS database was being hacked and the system was down for almost three to four days. Now imagine you were being scheduled for some surgery your data was in the laptop and that got compromised. Now, doctor don't know what to operate on you. And it, it's a matter of life basically, right? If something goes wrong in a such critical system, we don't know how much critical data get, can, it can get, uh, get into situation. Another thing, uh, this is a report of last week where India ranks second in the entire world where we are accountable for 20% of the data breach that happened worldwide. And our data, out of that 40% data, 20% data belongs to the India. So imagine where your data is ending up. Domino's, we order almost one, 18 crore people data. And what data is there? I mean, when we say data, it's not just your email address, your home address, because we know the, we inform the Domino's where they have to deliver. So it's your home address, your telephone number, your email address your contact details, everything is there on the dark web with the hacker. They have put it on sold for $40,000, all those 18,000 crore records. So imagine I can, if I am able to clone your SIM card with the phone number that I already have, then I can even do finance and transaction in your account. And you will not even get OTP for the same because I know that the clone is already being done. Big basket data, as I mentioned, it was all about sensitive personal data that is getting compromised these days. And we just read all these news, we don't bother about it until one of our own get victim. I'll just add over here, have you heard news recently, like two months back, one of the security head from one of the organization, he got hacked, right? There's a SIM cloning happened and around, he lost his around 50 to 70 lakhs rupees, right? Have you heard about that in like, not heard news? So he got like three to four calls 
and after fifth call his sim was cloned already and all the money was like most of the money was gone right so point here we are trying to make here is that it's very important to see how you are actually putting your information how you are sharing your information right it's very easy uh, but when things are free everyone knows you are the product right so that is what is happening uh, three to four years back when we looked at data of india where did it rank in the exposure it was around seven to eight position look at what pandemic has done to all of us so much of usage we are ranking second and the way trend is going on we would It'll rank be number first. one so we are the people who are responsible for our personal identity right? uh, i hope you all know this famous story about titanic uh, i am not talking about kate winslet or leonardo over here <laughs> i am talking about the cruise uh, when one of the person actually asked to the authority uh, of the titanic that why there are so many less lifeboats in this uh, cruise and the authority informed that because this boat will never sink the cruise will never sink but we all know what happened at the end of the day the iceberg it got hit and it sink basically consider your application as that cruise we always have this mindset with us we cannot be hacked or it is always been like this from the ages what changed today we have to come out of that mentality otherwise we don't know which iceberg you will hit one day and we know the penalties and the amount of business loss along with the reputation that it all leads to at the end of the day how many of you have seen this movie most of right right so a uh, bit of more addition when they were designing it was designed in a such a way it was supposed to be designed in such a way that it will never sink right despite of few people discussing what he said we did not see the external factors beyond the boundary of that cruise which was this which really made it sink and we all know what was bad state mitigation of life boats were not there which also led to lot of issues like that yep okay uh, so coming to uh, actual thing today so we would be talking about uh, devsecop what is been right now one of the thing which every organization everyone is into it right and you see this this is something which has come up uh, when the fins uh, military of america had to work on particular thing and they they come up with this first primary design and phases where they would have to really do a different kind of security test we are not going to talk about all the phases today we're going to talk about only one phase which is dev love within that on design and we're going to talk about what is important why is important to look at design first before you start coding we also did a uh, look at some surveys where it was asked to the programmers and the architects that how much you look at design uh, how much you look at design before you start really doing a coding for particular thing in context to security and it was found that around 70 plus percentage of people or responded do not think about security when they think about designing so that aspect has been completely missing and focus today would be towards that that what you have to consider when you are doing the design before you are coding so this is the same thing but much towards a software development life cycle this is secure software development life cycle where we have requirement design code build test release and post delivery monitoring all comes into a picture when we consider entire sdlc as a focus point but today our focus will be only towards securing application design and how we find issues vulnerabilities within that design so probably you know where we are heading we are heading towards design before coding Okay. and that is what it would be okay we are much ahead <laughs> <laughs> so by yeah here it is okay so uh, how many architects programmers here in the room 
uh, that's that's a good number good how you guys do it today if anyone can you raise the hand right yeah so there's a designing part and there's a coding part of it how you are looking at security Worrying about your part of it, right? That's it. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. So we uh, so uh, the application we work on is a, uh, an enterprise level application. So we look at the system level security definitely. Uh, for example, uh, the, the files that we use, you know, to configure the system. Uh, yeah. So the files that we use, uh, we, we make sure that those are secure, those cannot be encrypted, uh, so, so those are already encrypted, so you know, you, uh, you cannot really open them in any editor or something like that. Uh, we, we consider code and uh, code as well, but design is something where we, you know, we, I want to know, you know we, we really lack that, you know, how, how for, for feature designing, you know, when we design a solution for that, uh, how we can consider the security there in, in design perspective, that is something Okay. Fair enough. Good. So hey. what what we are basically seen is uh, design in totality has been not seen, right? Design when we start looking at the architecture design of any product, it has been seen in different terms of rims, right? Reliability, scalability, interoperability, and this things has been really looked at it as one part which is missing. Security. How you look at security when you are actually designing your architecture design at let it be at higher level or first level of design, what you are creating which can have a different integration systems applications so, right today we are going to help you to share what you what we learn in that terms in context of threat modeling right which yeah. we can use when you are designing your thing and we will talk about it right uh, first of all before we move there uh, we had already designed what would be API, APGI 6.0 app which would be launching soon for next year and up oh, where it is yes. okay and this is how it looks like. I, I already created yesterday night whole of this app and tomorrow probably you guys would look at it. And uh, this looks a good design, right? The one quickly. So Can when you see like uh, at a very high level, you will feel that okay, everything appears to be okay. It's just a mobile device and web application support with some payment integration, database access, API. It's like look looks okay on paper, right? I, architecture, a normal common architecture. There is no complexity also over here. But that is what we have to change. We have to find the threat in this along with the assets. Where is the problem in this? We have to identify where can things go wrong. We have to change that mindset and the approach over here. One of the way to do that is threat modeling. It's basically a technique which allows us to find a issue within the design itself. It provides us different models and different parameters that we can apply on the design to break it. Basically, we are not saying that this is something created a wrong, but this particular design or a structure can lead to a problem later on. And that is what we would, we would like to identify in much earlier phase. Remember that one diagram that we saw? We are moving towards more left. We don't want that these issues are being found when we are running application into a production and customer reports that back, right? Now let's understand this threat and everything in much simpler form, which uh, maybe most of us will be able to connect. So what is that asset? Uh, I know it's not kind of uh, great text coming up over here, but first text is asset. So it is something that we would like to protect something that we feel that it is valuable to me okay and i would like to protect for today if we all of consider over here my mobile phone is my asset if that gets stolen my payment and my i mean there are a lot of personal data basically within your cell phone itself so that's an asset to you just an example vulnerability vulnerability is something which can lead to a problem that means a loophole in the system which can lead to your asset exposed to the external world basically yeah then it comes is threat what is threat over here basically it is something 
which can damage a risk basically that risk which possesses which is allowing your way towards vulnerability which exposes your asset to the outer world now comes the threat threat <coughs> is possibility the likelihood of your asset getting uh, compromised because the risk that possesses or because of the vulnerability that exists in the system okay and who will do all those things is the threat agent somebody or someone with the malicious mind would like to exploit that particular risk or a vulnerability which that attacker would like to get access to your asset so that is the overall terminology and our approach with respect to breaking the architecture that is the design that most of us create while we deliver or create a product yeah yeah <clears throat> so let's let's look at uh, before we get uh, get on to this uh, let's sure. look at the previous slide where you had shown like what are the things you really have to identify so while you're doing design as he said asset is this an architect job to only identify the asset yes no no. Then whose job it is? Yes, it looks like recently there are a lot of posts which talks about security is everyone's responsibility. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but then who everyone is? In sorry. Everyone involved in the application. So uh, yes. that means Product enterprise product. level application, hundred and fifty people. So the product, if anyone can talk, speak up. Okay. So when, when everybody is involved, nobody is involved. Okay. Product manager, you said all the people, right? And users, users? and users, right? Okay. What is happening today? Does this, what we all are saying here in the conference, does it happen in real sense? No. So what is missing? Why it's not happening? Priority. Priority. Yeah, that's a very good answer. I thought it will come last, but still. Works in silos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reason this has not been taken. Yeah, sorry. Wrong design. Not consider that aspect. Yes. Lack of awareness. Yes. Sorry. Deadlines. Deadlines. <laughs> okay. So I think so. You all are telling the pain what you are actually experiencing right now, and that's how it is. Problem. What happens is. The prioritization of security while designing the architecture is absolutely not there. No one really thinks about security, right? Everyone thinks when I'm designing an architecture based on all my architectural design pattern, that means I'm doing everything. Go through all the architecture design pattern, it does not explicitly talk about security. Does it has to be? No. But unfortunately, it is a conditioning that security is being taken care by other teams, infra will take care of, infra team, cloud team will take care of their. I come when I come at the coding stage, right, as a most of the maximum number of people and it is already taken care, I have to do the design patterns and I have to take care of my code. It does not happen in that way. It is too late to make any changes to do the adoption. Mostly this kind of things happen only post production when there is a vulnerability form, right. Idea is here to bring in that process within your teams, within yourself, where design is happening, right, first level of design has happened checking with architecture team or technical team or a requirements team or a customer have you really it talked about assets talked though this is a very very basic english word identification asset itself is a process involving customer involving user involving architects involving team that what exactly are different kind of an ass assets that we are taking care of it then identifying the vulnerabilities then identifying your risk threats this is a process which might take one or two weeks, but today we all are not doing it. It has been considered if you have your some dynamic tools or security related tools, it would be taken care. That tools will not gonna do the analysis and gonna tell you what are your assets, right? The tools is not gonna understand the business aspect of your product. So this is the need of the hours and you as a people who are represented into software development has to go back and has to have this kind of either sprint running or an inception for there where your security has been really discussed. Again, this thing can be on paper. It doesn't need tool to be discussed, but yeah. it needs to be a good questioning to be done, right? To have a very good design in context to considering the security, right? 
Now, when we go to a next step, what are the major steps you can take while you are doing this discussion or when you are talking about it? So, identifying the system boundaries. Can someone help me with that? System boundaries. Someone said something? Scope. Scope of the? What areas you are going to cover. Okay. Yeah. What else? Who are the users and which domain? Who are the users which are the domain they are going to access? Correct. All the interfaces, yeah. right? Things can be allowed, cannot be allowed. Inbound, outbound? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What else? Yes. 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 We are almost. Sorry. Yeah. Network boundaries. Network boundaries. Right. In, if, if we talk in very simple thing, interfaces wherever your data would be getting processed, either inbound or outbound, just to understand. All that ends, right? All that points are a system boundaries for us. Why? that does not happen right at design level is it does tell you what are the endpoints, what are the interfaces right. But is that interface or is that endpoints looked at it as a security aspect of it. So, first thing would be identifying all the system boundaries right. Second thing would be once you do that create a data flow diagram. How many of you have seen data flow diagram or an architecture of your products you guys are working on today? Ah, that is nice. So, it was part of your onboarding or you went and asked? <laughs> you coach to do it. That is lovely. We will learn more from you then. Apart from that, how many programmers? There were few programmers. Uh, sorry, you are going to be guinea pig. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> you, you are a programmer. Did you went someone shown you while onboarding like, okay, this is our architecture diagram? Yeah, we need to create such diagram. Uh -huh. That was three years back, and now never, no one has seen it again, yeah. right? So design happens once. If there is a process and there is an audit, then it is going to be getting updated, right? Sorry. <laughs> Otherwise your designs are not getting updated, your code is and there is a very good philosophy again nothing against agile thing, working software is real thing right. So, we believe so much into working software we forget about other things and this is happening and everyone you must be experiencing that when there is a failure, bhaiya documentation kidhar hai iska, kaun tha is pe, chalo jao git pe jaake dekho, who has checked in and when I find that person name he has left he is into third company already, that's true. <laughs> So, that is a big problem. Yes, working software, minimum documentation, this is the deliverables for me. It has to be considered. Tip to the programmer. TL story pe kaam shuru kar de, architecture dikha tu meko pehle. Show me the architecture, how it is, show me the interface, what it is working for. You are going to design your code more better if you know all the entities, if you know all the interfaces. You have to do that. Very much important, right? I know uh, age old, whenever I used to do program, we had something in a gate 10 minutes, that's really bad. We, we had this like class activity diagram and entity diagram. I don't recall nowadays people do that. There are a lot of tools which help you to do that, which means you're not going and designing for yourself, not looking at it, right? Okay, so create data flow diagram that identify threats. Today, we are not talking about the physical threats, right? and not an infrastructure th threats, we would be only talking about the application threats, right. So, identify all the threats which means in very simple term interfaces, endpoints, data, data storage, server, all that identification has to be done. Try to visualize, very important thing is when you design, visualize your product, though your product has been not made, visualize your user, visualize the behavior of user to understand what can be a possible threat, it is a very good activity to be done. Then start ranking your threats. Why ranking? Uh, anyone PO, PM from here? Yes, why ranking, Hiren? Priority. Priority. Uh, kind of work on the, you know, more, uh, let's say, we look at two aspects. What is the effect of that uh, issue? And, uh, you know, how free, uh, what is the possibility of that issue to occur? And based on that, we prioritize so that we can tackle those 
most prominent one first. Superb. I know you got it trained from my training. That's really good. Because <laughs> otherwise, this PO would have talked about what impacts my business. But today he talked about threat. That's really good. Good. So yes, impact which has been created by that kind of threat would be something which will help you to do ranking. Right? And that is, would be in your backlog. Then start identifying what can be the mitigation to your threats. Right? Do we do that? Right now, let's forget about security. When you're doing a programming, right? I was uh, yesterday uh, finding one uh, meme which was talking about a programmer. I had written a test case that means it is not going to break any time. Is that true, right? I have a unit test, I have a test case, things are done, right? So try to mitigate your threats. Again, before writing a single line of code, this should happen. Is this a silver bullet is going to cover like 100% of your threats? No. Here is to build a mindset to have a discussion with each and every team member to see what kind of threats can come. This activity will help you to also understand your product and your user and the behavior, which probably doesn't happen in natural course. And then very important activity which we all miss, review and update. There should be a regular review without under pressure of audit or compliance to look at your design diagram and code. Right? If it takes you to prioritize your class to be refactored, try to do that. Reach out to your PO, tell the importance of what it will happen if I don't do that. Right. So review and update this thing. This is a living thing. Threat modeling, whole process is a living thing. It's not a one-time activity like a design. So it has to be regularly reviewed and updated. And then what we gain, probably, can any guesses what we'll gain? <laughs> Sorry. By doing that. One has leaked now already, but still. By doing this, what it help? What will help, or what? What would we gain? We would be having secured application, secured application right? Trust. Trust. Yes. Trust. yes. Trust of Custom. customers and users. Mm -hmm. Lovely, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's look at it. Reducing the uh, attack surface, right? You are looking less crisis management. Less crisis management. Oh. True cost. True. Yes. This is a lovely thing. I want to see how people you respond. Improving collaboration. collaboration. Any product development manager, line manager here, human resource. It sounds. A lot of engaging with the team or something. Yes, I like it. Okay, take care. Aishwarya, what do you think around this? Improving collaboration. Okay. Is this an improve improving collaboration within teams, team members? We are talking about security. We are talking about threat modeling. So when I was putting it, he was like, you are in role of product development manager. That's the reason you're putting this. <laughs> okay, that's not the thing. Improving collaboration is uh, when there's an enterprise level of application, multiple teams, multiple products, multiple interface, multiple open APIs are there. When you have a good design and documentation available in crisis management, when there is a situation of crisis, it is easy to understand the matrix, to understand the responsibility, to understand how better we can address the issue at the hand. Most of the time, also with the survey and data we were looking is most of the time these things are not in place and we lose on a lot of things, reputation, cost, trust. Though everything is binded at a SLA and SLA is mere responding stating that, okay, we are looking at it. And then we start searching the documentation where it is li lying into archives, right? Main thing over here is to see how well written design documentation and control you have. It will help you to collaborate better with your sister teams or any other vendor or partners or customers, right? And in case of external dependency, you know what you are consuming in your application. That's right. Because if they get uh, compromised, you are, your application will also be compromised because you are one of their users who is delivering your product to some third person. We'll skip this faster development, yes, it would. Not in terms of you start doing faster development, it would at least rework is 
will stop. A lot of things you will identify early and you do not have to work on it. So faster development, improved quality. Like you guys said, I do not have to talk more about it, how it is improved quality. It is most important thing, paychecks. Cost saving, huge cost saving, right? We are already spoke about in India context. Some amount which was reported. India is also one of the country where big amount of cyber crime which is happening or loss of asset is happening which is not been reported. So think about when it gets reported, how huge amount it would be, right? Yeah. Okay, we have 10 minutes. I want them that they will take 10 minutes more for the lunch. Okay, we'll take quick 5 minutes, right? Let's take a sure. simple example what it is. Everyone has to do on their table. Let's do it very quickly. You have understood the steps, what you have to do when you are identifying this. He's going to tell what is the example. It is the building house, yeah. designing so the house. This is our uh, house uh, and we have to identify threats, possible threat in a house. You can refer a picture, you can refer your own house. Give me some pointers, like first point, identify threats. What are the threats here in this case? What are my assets first of all? Assets, assets. Yeah. House. So first step is identifying the asset, right? House. 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 So house itself is, yeah. So house itself can be one of them, right? Then? People. Yes. People. Then? Anything else? Everything. Assets around the house, peripheral yes. assets, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's move quickly because of less time. So people, content inside, valuables, all things are my assets. Next step is threats. From whom? What? Okay. Wow. People are thinking. Burglars. Global yes. warming. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Rising sea levels. Yes. Good. Any final call? Huh? You are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragons are coming. Okay. So people, burglars, fires, other. Okay. Now find uh, access vulnerabilities. What is the vulnerability in this nature of house could be? Someone already answered actually. Okay. Quickly, area is more prone to the burglary. So we have to identify now how we can mitigate all these problems. Risk, possible risk. Already someone said uh, flood, right? So let's move on. Last one, Mit mitigating measures. What can be the fixes for all these problems? For example, burglary. Huh? Sorry? <laughs> okay. 10 feet above the ground, okay? Okay, yeah, elevate the house. Upward one, okay. Boundary walls. Boat house, something that sort of what? Okay. So installing CCTV cameras, creating emergency exit plan if in case there is a tsunami or something, elevate the house, somebody said, so like that. Yeah. Uh, Yagnesh was very sincere, one I said I will not build the house, I will not buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, let's not get into this because we would like you to spend time on one slide, uh, maybe three to four minutes we take there. These are some of the tools that will help you to do this exercise that we were doing today over here. Okay, there are tools and models available from Microsoft. There is a tool from OEPS, Thread Dragon, and there is uh, uh, there is one more website right. which will help you to create such nature of uh, diagrams and identify thread within them. It will give you hint what is the problem in this particular design that you have drawn and how you can mitigate that problem. Okay, we like to emphasize: do do not forget about having this process done. Tools are just to help you, right? And this is something that uh, we would like to give you as a food for thought. Uh, we go on social media, I'm going to lunch, catch up, upload. Let them, let them experience that. Sorry. Yeah. So we have so a lunch, <laughs> see what you don't have to do during lunch. Can you please, yeah, can you please this? play this video? There's a video uh, embedded in that. If not, then these people will be curious whole day. <laughs> It should play. Embedded. It is embedded. It is working actually. I think. It, is it, it, is it should play. Yeah, yeah. Internet. Okay. If not working, then uh, 
I hope you are able to at least understand the basic stages and major steps of doing a threat modeling. Uh, let him fix. Uh -huh. Any quick question, reflection, meanwhile? Yeah, let me. I'm be ready. Question. Yes. So I would suggest the first thing to be done is to be done for the systems which are into production. Difficult part is to convince everyone, can we do this? Right? Can we spend time on this? So if you do not have a design for that, you probably start from there. Start looking at how your product has been getting installed, what is the infrastructure, what are the interface, and have your design up to have your design up to date. This tools what we are looking at, you can apply to it, you can apply the procedure to it and start identifying what are the threats. Another thing can be done is learn from whatever vulnerability you had already found, the bugs you had found or threats you had found. Try to see that and get this done. Probably it is a good thing, though it is into maintenance, right? You have to do a support and there would be a SLA. It's good thing to get your design validated for security and threat modeling. And basically it's a good idea to do it whenever there is a major version releases or major change into design this should be part of your process. Though there are a lot of security and compliances which are coming around it which will force you to do that, but it becomes your part and parcel of regular work, that would be really good. And then we look at the design part, how about the coding part of how we can take care of the security and <coughs> actually, you know, uh, developing a product. So, one thing is there are, uh, security design principles which can be applied while you're doing that to step one and then there are tools which is going to help you to identify the threats which are there. So that can be two practices which can be brought up. So, again, talking about the we should not be, but just we have to check that how they are taking care of security for their product before we getting integrated. So it also depends on like what is your interface with them. What like data, because one of the things would be data, storage. So that would be also one of the factor to look at. But yes, we don't reinvent everything, but we can check. So this is what happens, you know, I want to get my work quickly done, I'm going to get someone third party vendor and get associated. Yeah, there, there's recently happened, really everyone good. must be aware if that video is not flowing. Uh, it, will, we, uh, it is? Then we I'll can. stop you look at this video. Uh, please. Oh, hi, Akhil now. What's the name? Uh, Joel. What was the name? Alex. Alex. Thank you. Hey, Tony? Yes. If you like our Facebook page, we give you a free hot drink and a free pastry. We have a new like for Damien. We have a new like for Damien. Hey, Carly, are you standing by? Standing by. Hi there, can I help? Yeah, I just uh, liked your Facebook page. Okay, I'll search Facebook I'm now. I'm searching Google. I have a phone number. I've got his email address. Okay, Carly, are you ready for information on Damien? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I am. Mother's maiden name is He banks with Hey, Carly, this is the girl coming in now with the blue scarf. What's her name? Nicholas. Nicholas. His date of birth, 7th May. She lives at 38A. Just be a couple of seconds. Two children, eight, 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 Damien, age yeah. 26 and a fitness instructor. How do you know what that? Where did you go to UCL? Martin went to South Thames College, assistant psychologist at Great Ormond Street. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know that. Huh? Better? You know I'm a Christian as well. Oh yeah, we know everything about you, Martin. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Anna from Russia. Yeah, so <coughs> probably you know what's happening. The last slide would be we all are breaking for lunch, right? And when there is free lunch, uh, I know everyone has paired, so there's no free lunch. When there is a free lunch, what happens? Whenever you go for a free lunch, when you go for a free lunch, you are the product. Keep in mind. So nothing is free. When you're getting something free, that means there is something behind it. Try to take care of your data. As Indians, I'm 
trying to say on behalf of it. We are very neglect. We do. We neglect lot on our data, on our privacy, on on everything. Right. I request every one of you to really take care of your data and your privacy. We know from the birth of the child already. If you ask, all the data of that child would be already there on Facebook. That child would, when he grows up. There is nothing for him to share that I have done this. We have seen your post already, right? <laughs> Try to take care of it. Do not be very casual about it, right? We are the data, as I said, two rupees of your data, which is not much. Again, thank you. Enjoy yes. your lunch. Hope Thanks you like the session, right? And free to meet you all, talk to you all offline, and discuss more on security and privacy. Thank you. Thank you. Yagnish. Please, Thank please you wait, much. wait for a moment. We would like to felicitate Tiren and Yagnish. Definitely, in logo ne aap logo ka kam bada hoga. Ab har story ke liye tumhe design dekhna padegi. So sorry for that. We can't help it. So I would like to call upon Shivani. Shivani, could you, could you please come on the stage and please felicitate Yagnish. And where is our photo man, Adit Bhai? Maybe, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Agnesh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to call upon Dipti. Dipti, could you please come on stage and please felicitate Dhiren. Thank you. <laughs> now, the last bit, I think last time even I had already shared. So, Aditya, can you please come on to the Slido? So, team, all of you, please help us. Please go on slido.com. We are going to share a one unique code for this session. And please provide your feedback, observation. Just give us a second. So, you're anonymous, so your data yeah. is not getting captured. <laughs> <laughs> <Do that. laughs> And don't worry, after that you will guys have a delicious lunch. <laughs> and everybody has read the agenda and everybody is aware about it. Iske baad to lunch milne wala hai. 2194762 Hopefully slido.com is working fine. And there is a selfie booth available, please go and we have a hashtag, no more a stranger. All of you belongs to APGI community now and all of you belong to as a friend, as a collaborator, as a professional community. Please join APGI. Thank you all. Thank you guys for attending.